What's up everybody, I'm Chef Marcus Samuelson and I'm gonna teach you one practical cooking tip that I learned from these eight amazing chefs featured on my new Audible original seat at the table. Let's get into the kitchen. This tip I learned from the incredible Miss Leah Chase. Ah, don't put the hot sauce on the fried chicken before you taste the chicken. The reason why Miss Chase always said that was because before you put something as spicy and strong as hot sauce on this food, you have to taste the food. So when you cook at home, don't put any condiments on the food before you taste it, because you want to know how it should taste, and then if it's missing heat, if it's missing salt, if it's missing sour, then you can bring the condiment in. That just doesn't go for the hot sauce, that goes for everything. Mmm. You don't need the hot sauce, it's delicious. Even President Obama got caught in that. This is a beautiful picture where she has him in, in like headlock. Yeah. She goes, oh, it's the President of the United States, this yeah. 90 year old lady. Because <laughs> he put hot sauce, he put hot sauce on the chicken. Charles Fan from the famous Atlanta Doors in San Francisco taught me how to cook with fish sauce. Don't be afraid of it. It's bold, it's salty, it's fermentation, it's all of it. But it comes down to balance. He blends heat like Fresno chilies, for example. Sweet, like papaya or mango. And then the salt and funkiness really comes from fish sauce. Fish sauce is bold, it's salty, it's funky. I use fish sauce when I saute mushrooms. I use fish sauce if I make an omelet. If I make a toast for my son, I put fish sauce in. I don't tell him, but it's in there. <laughs> I use fish sauce for everything. It's just something in that funk fermentation that is just so delicious and makes the food really craveable. If you want to make craveable, delicious, funky food, use fish sauce. The one who really taught me that was Chef Charles Fang. Gabriel Hamilton really taught me how to take risk in a dish. One of the riskiest ingredients you can work with is monkfish liver. When you think about awful dishes, you think about kidney, maybe even heart, foie gras, things like that. But Gabriel Hamilton brought monkfish liver to a new life. So, here we go. I have a little butter in the pan, some oil, and I'm just gonna sear the monkfish liver. This dish is so delicious, so innovative, and craveable right away. I'm gonna caramelize it. Monkfish liver, to that point, was mostly in Japanese restaurants, and it's referred to as anko. But here, in this bistro, on the Lower East Side, monkfish liver became the ingredient that chefs all over the city wanted to put on the menu. Gabrielle, I'm mad at you for making monkfish liver expensive. As a chef, I think about risk reward. This dish has it all. So my one tip is cook risky like chef Gabrielle Hamilton. Twenty years later. We're still chasing you, Gabrielle. It's very good. This tip comes from the amazing chef Nancy Silverton and the late chef Mark Peel. So much about your personal style needs to go into a dish or the place. One thing that Nancy taught me was this tiny tip when it comes to how she makes pasta. The way she puts garlic into the pasta it's not tiny, chopped, minced. It's actually just thinly sliced like this, which just allows the garlic not to get too burnt, and then just heat it with a little bit of olive oil. And when you eat it, you get a better, fuller piece of the garlic, and it makes the whole pasta dish so much more delicious. And isn't that what we all want? Just a delicious pasta that everyone can relate to, but just have changed ever so slightly. I will be forever grateful from what I've learned from Chef Nancy Silverton, and Mark Pio. One of the most amazing people that I've ever met was the Renaissance woman, Alberta Wright. One thing that I learned from Miss Alberta Wright was really go with your curiosity. And the curiosity in cooking can be endless, but if you go with your curiosity, you never know what you're gonna find. One of the ingredients that she taught me about was shito, a staple in the Ghanaian kitchen. This incredible fermented shrimp paste. Shito is almost like what miso is in Japanese food or a fish sauce in let's say Vietnamese with a little bit more kick. It's fermented, it's spicy, and it just makes this she crab soup, which was her signature dish, even better. 
I'm just gonna drizzle some shito into the she crab soup and it's gonna make it even more delicious. If you're curious, you know there's gonna be lots of delicious things you're gonna find. Thank you so much, Alberta Wright. I miss you. What did I learn from Chef Thomas Keller in the French Laundry? The one thing that Thomas taught me and all of us is that when you work with high-end ingredients, you kind of have to slow everything down and give the ingredient the respect it deserves. It's really the love for the place, where it comes from, the process, and you really represent all the people it took to get that ingredient to the plate. When you cook at the highest level, it's all about understanding what is the main ingredients on the plate. And all the other ingredients are there to just support that. Here we have a beautiful lobster poached in butter. The brioche is cut in perfection just to give you a perfect texture and sweetness. Underneath that, you have beautiful lemon aioli to give you both acid and enough richness. The caviar gives you both saltiness and another poppy texture and the rich California extra virgin olive oil to give you both terroir and the correct mouthfeel. All of this just to create the perfect bite. Let's check it out. This is so delicious. That's how you create a perfect bite. Thank you, Chef Keller. Great. I'm not sharing this. <laughs> This tip is simple. Trust, eat, love your family food. When someone in the family says this is good, it can be the beginning of a restaurant empire. If your uncles or your grandma or anyone in the family, that recipe is just that good, sometimes you just gotta go with your gut. That's how Ben and Virginia Lee started Ben's Chili Bowls. And it's been going for over 60 years. And here it is. Very few things are more American than hot dogs. So if you're gonna build your entire business on a hot dog, you gotta have a strong point of view and a great recipe. That's what Virginia and Ben Ali banked their business on. He knew he had a chili recipe back home that he wanted to bring and built his business on. And 60 plus years later, it's still the best chili in town. Maybe even in America. The smoked salmon pizza. Almost what MTV did for music, Wolfgang and Spago did the same for food. He brought bold flavors together with cultures and food that probably haven't been mixed before. Wolfgang brought it all to one plate. All right, let's go. When I say bold, I mean bold. He just took this beautiful chives, wasabi, aioli, and just spread it out. Every Italian in the world must have gone, no, what are you doing? Wolfgang didn't care, he just wanted to make it delicious. It's almost like Walk This Way or something like that with Ron DMC, where two different songs merge to one. This is a dish that is as big as Walk This Way. A little bit more chives and some high-end caviar, why not? And boom, there you have it. The iconic smoked salmon pizza from Spago and Chef Wolfgang Puck. One of the reasons why you can buy it in the supermarket today, 40 years later, is because Wolfgang Puck was bold. If you want to make great food at home, be bold. Wow, that's a tip from some of the best, most iconic chefs in the world. I hope you try one of them next time you cook. Check out Seat at the Table. <laughs>